section to imagine. Um, but first, of course, that's just going to be 7. Similarly, the square root of 16 is just going to be 4. Um, but what about the square root of 24? 24 is not a perfect square. So that's when we have to break this down. So 24 is the same thing as 4 times 6. And then the square root of 4 is 2, so this can be written as 2 radical 6. All right, so get all of this back to the front of your brain. Now, if I want to do 3 square root of 25, then I've got the 3. Um, the square root of 25 is 5. Um, and these two are going to wind up multiplying together. So that's going to give us 15. Um, looking at number 5, uh, that 5 is just going to sit there for a minute. 50 is not a perfect square, so we have to break that up. Um, we could split up 50 as 25 times 2. Now, 25 is a perfect square. So I will have 5 times, now the square root of 25 is 5, All right? That's where this 5 is coming from, the square root of 25. And then we have that square root of 2. But of course, 5 times 5 is 25. So the final answer will be 25 radical 2. Now, um, I could look at this as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. Because we normally couldn't take the square root of a negative number, but uh, the square root of negative 1 is defined as the imaginary unit i. So this would be the same thing as i. And square root of 9 is 3. Now, we don't write i3 in the same way that we don't write x3. Instead, if we have a variable and a number, we write 3x. And if we have i and a number, we write 3i, like that. So that's how we would write our final answer, would be 3i. All right, but this video is really about imaginary numbers. And um, imaginary numbers occur when you have the square root of negative 1. The square root of negative 1 is defined as being i. And that allows us to do a lot of problems that we wouldn't be able to do normally. So um, when you see the square root of negative 13, technically what you have is uh, you could look at this as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 13. And then, like I said, the square root of negative 1, that's i. So that's going to give you i and then radical 13. And that's all you can do with that. That's the final answer. Now, as I've already explained, the square root of negative 1 is defined as i. So that's all there is to number 8. All right, now what about this? So any, <coughs> excuse me, any time you see a negative under the radical, you know you're going to have an i. So I'm going to show a couple extra steps that you wouldn't normally need. <coughs> First of all, we've got the 4. That's not going anywhere. And um, so here's a step you wouldn't normally show. That negative, you could look at it as a negative 1. And then you've got the 36, right? Um, so that would give you 4 and then i. And then the square root of 36 is 6. So you have 4 times i times 6. But then 6 times 4 is 24. And don't forget the i. So your final answer here would be 24i. All right, now as soon as you see that negative under the radical, you know that's going to be i. 29 is a prime number, so we're going to still have the square root of 29. So it's just simply going to be 5i radical 9. Notice where the i goes in between the regular number and the radical.
Okay, now as soon as you see that negative sign, you know we're going to have an I involved in here somewhere. Um, now, imagine uh, the square root of 80, uh, square root of 18 though. So fine, we've got that square root of negative 1. That's going to be I. Um, but then, the rest of it, 18 is 9 times 2. Okay, so um, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 2, can't do anything with that. Um, the square root of negative 1 is I, but um, we're going to put it over here. All right, so your final answer should be 3i radical 2. So notice how i works in terms of the position. Uh, if you just have a number like 3, the i goes uh, to the right. If you have a radical like the square root of 2, then the i goes to the left, i radical 2. If you have both, like 3 and a radical 2, then the i goes in the middle. As soon as you see that negative under the radical, you know we're going to have an i. Now, looking at the 12, um, think 4 times 3. So that's square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And yeah, we got that square root of negative 1. So that's going to be 2 radical 3. And this uh, negative is going to become i. So 2i radical 3. All right, so now we have this sum. So let's hang on to this negative 9 for a moment. The square root of negative 16. Well, the square root of 16 is 4. Uh, but because of the negative under there, I'm going to have i. So this is going to be negative 9 plus 4i. Now, these are not like terms. I cannot add these together. This will not make negative 5i. It's just like if I had negative 9 plus 4x. All right, you can't put those together. If I had negative 9x plus 4x, that would make negative 5x. All right, but if one of them has the x and one of them doesn't, they're not like terms. You'd have to stop. So this is your final answer. All right, on number 14, um, we've got the 5 plus. Now, uh, you know we're going to have i. Look at the 75. All right, so fine. I've got the square root of negative 1. That's my i. Now, 75 is 25 times 3. You know, 3 quarters make 75 cents. Um, so anyway, this is going to be 5 plus. Now, the square root of 25 is 5. This uh, negative 1 is going to give us i. And then I've got my radical 3. Again, these are not like terms. This is the final answer. You cannot add these together and get 10 i radical 3. You have to stop right here. All right, I'm hoping this type of expression looks familiar um, because this is the type of thing you get when you're using the quadratic formula. But right now, let's just practice simplifying it. So um, we've got this negative 6 plus or minus. Okay, and I've got the square root. All right, so it's just a matter of, all right, we've got 4 times 3 times 7. All right, so that's like 12 times 7, which is 84. Okay, let me bring it over here. So now I've got negative 6 plus or minus. 9 minus 84 is negative 75. Okay, that's all over 3. Um, so that negative, you know we're going to have i. Okay, so keep that in mind. So I've got plus or minus 75. Um, well that's radical 25 times radical 3. All right, um, but the square root of 25 is 5. So I'm just going to go ahead and change it. So this is going to give me 5. And don't forget the negative under the radical is going to become i. And there's nothing we can do with this. Um, 3 goes into 6, but it does not go into 5. So there's no more simplification to be done. So this would be the final answer. All right, let's do it again. So I have 10 
plus or minus. Okay. So I've got 16 minus. All right, um, two times five is 10. Four times 10 is 40. So I've got 16 minus 40. All right, so that's gonna give me 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 24 over two. So you see that negative under the radical? That's gonna be I. All right, but let's do the rest of it. So I have 10 plus or minus. Now 24, you can break that up as radical four and radical six. And because of the negative, you know we're gonna have the I in there. Okay, but the square root of four is two. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to avoid copying the whole thing over again. So this is gonna be two I radical six. Now in this case, we can simplify. Um, I like to put a heart around these things right here. All right, see how all three of these things are divisible by two? It has to be all or nothing. If all three of these are divisible by two, um, we can go ahead and do it. All right, um, so let's divide all three of those by two. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna leave the heart. Ten divided by two is five. Two divided by two is one. Basically, those cancel out. So I'll just have I radical six. So this would be the final answer for number 16. Okay, so we have real numbers and we have imaginary numbers. Real numbers are all the things we worked with before, starting with whole numbers like five. Um, including negative numbers like negative three, including fractions like negative two thirds, including radicals, whoa, including radicals like square root of seven um, and pi. All right, all of these things are real numbers. All right, decimals, all right, 0 0.2. All right, Every, all of these numbers we worked with until we um, ran into I, um, these are all real numbers. Now, if you have a number that has an I in it, then it's gonna be imaginary. Um, so if I have three I, or um, you know, think of some of these things that didn't simplify, okay? Like um, if I have three plus two i, or like right here, I had five plus i radical six. All of these things are imaginary numbers because they have this imaginary part with the, with the i in it. All right, so, we, so you understand you have real numbers and you have imaginary numbers. Um, when I first started learning about um, imaginary numbers and then this term complex numbers would come up, and um, I had trouble understanding when I was a student, you know, what's the difference? You know, uh, they seem, it seemed like complex numbers and imaginary numbers were the same thing. But now I understand that the set of complex numbers is the larger set that includes real numbers and imaginary numbers. Okay? Um, so complex numbers can be written in the form A plus b i and you might be thinking well wait a minute you just said if there's an i then that would make it imaginary well basically real numbers are numbers where the coefficient b is zero so you know five you could think of that as five plus zero i um, so because it's zero i that's what makes it a real number because you don't write the zero i all right, and that's the same thing for all of these. All of these things, you could put plus zero i on it. So real numbers and imaginary numbers are complex numbers. Um, looking at the three i, I could look at that as a a plus b i complex number by looking at it as zero plus three i. The real part just is zero in this case. 
Okay, so complex numbers and imaginary numbers are not the same thing. Imaginary numbers have i, real numbers don't have i, but complex numbers include all of them. All right, all of the imaginary numbers and the real numbers together make up the set of complex numbers. So everything is a complex number. All right. Okay, so um, as far as putting these expressions in the right place on the Venn diagram, that should be pretty easy. Um, 2 plus 3i, well, it's got the i in it, so it's going to go over here. All right, 2, whoops, 2 plus 3i. All right, 2 radical 3, well, that's a real number. Again, there's no i in it, so that's going to go on the real number side. Negative 7, there's no i, so that goes on the real number side. 4 minus radical 5, that's a, all of these are real numbers. Uh, but then 6i, you see the i, so that's imaginary. But notice, all of these, all of them are complex numbers. All right, because they can all be written in the form a plus b i. Okay, um, they're all complex numbers. Anyway, moving on to number 18. So let's just practice writing um, all of these complex numbers in the form a plus b i. Okay, well, 7 is a real number, but only because the the imaginary, the imaginary uh, term must have a b of 0. So 7 plus 0i is how you could write it as a complex number in standard form. Um, 5i is a pure imaginary number, but we could look at it as 0 plus 5i. Okay, there's the real part and the imaginary part. Okay, and pi. We could look at that as pi, the real part, plus 0i. So pretty simple.